Hey folks, Steve here with a Plan 1919 video. Uh, the first of maybe a couple that we'll cover here on the channel. Now I know what you're thinking. Say, hey Steve, you did a post-mortem on 1918-1919 Storm in the West, and it sounded like you were about done with the game. And I was, but as I was looking at all the counters out, I said, you know what, we, we did a lot of coverage. Why, why don't we just... Why don't we just tackle the other big scenario, right? And and play through it, see how it plays, um, and and compare it because we played, you know, the main 1918 scenario ended early. We played the Allied offensive to sort of complete the 1918 experience. There is another scenario that sort of a alternate history hypothetical. If the Allies were on the offensive and the Germans maintained a defensive perimeter uh, without the need to do the Kaiser Schlacht. Um, we didn't play that because it, I mean, it would have been a little bit different than the standard game we played, uh, standard modes that we played, but not significantly different. But this is going to be for the Plan 1919 campaign, uh, which is a variant that is included in the game, um, which uses special counters and additional rules, and, and is different enough, or is kind of a interesting twist on the whole thing, that I figured, you know, why not? Let, let's give it a play. We'll get a couple videos out of it. I'll get to experience all these other neat little counters and stuff, um, and it, it'll be cool. So when we finish this up, I'll have really experienced most of what this game has to offer, and, and we'll be able to go into that coming review with even more nuanced understanding of what did we buy when we purchased this game. So we'll get into it. The first thing you'll see here is that the map is different. It does say Plan 1919 in the, uh, the upper right up there. This is the back side of the paper map. For the other scenario, so we just I, I moved all the counters off, picked up my plexiglass, flipped the map around, and put everything back on. Uh, and it is the, the 1919 map. Now you might ask, well, what's so different? Well, the turn track is different. So instead of it being 16 turns, it is just nine with a couple of different callouts. Um, it's going to be dry weather every turn except for the last two can potentially be wet. Um, the map terrain actually differs quite a bit, so the main things I would just point out is that there are markers on the map to denote like right here and like over here that denote that there is a dedicated American sector to the front line now. So before it was, you know, there's British, French, and the Americans are kind of mingled in in a variety of places. Now uh, the situation is that the British have the north sector, uh, the French, you know, the left wing, the French have the center, and the Americans have down here as a dedicated sector of operations. Um, we also have changes in the line. So the secondary German line right here uh, has now become uh, main trench lines. So there's two main trench lines here. So in the hypothetical situation here where the war stretches from 1918 into 1919, the Germans have built up the uh, secondary line to be at you know basically as good as uh, the the main line the original first line I guess you might look at it so there's going to be some additional difficulty in the allies punching their way through a double layered defense across the board um, and then you know and I looked around at other bits on the map I couldn't notice a huge amount of other differences um, those seem to be the main differences uh, I didn't check to see if any morale places have a different morale uh, number. It looks like they're all the same when I kind of poke around. So, um, you know, this, uh, the other thing I guess is that the marker track has different printings in the boxes to where markers start at. Um, so there's that, I guess. Um, there's a couple of interesting things. So, so like, what what is this scenario portraying? Well, you know, the, the rule book kind of provides the, the situation where... Um, you know, the Germans were able, you know, had different leadership, they managed to defend over here, they fought offensives elsewhere, and managed to be in a pretty good spot and heading into 1919, and now the Allies are pressed to try to beat down the Germans so they have a better spot at the negotiating table for the armistice. So, um, it is 1919, things are a little bit different. The Germans are essentially on the strategic defensive, the uh, Allies are on the offensive, but they have greater uh, air force and uh, and greater armor capabilities than in previous scenarios. So there are special rules that govern some of that stuff. We will get into that. Um, 
but yeah, there, there's a whole string of special rules specifically for this scenario. They're nothing too dramatically different from the main game, uh, but they add some, some interesting twists that we'll get into as we play through. There's one thing that is kind of annoying. Um, so there is a Japanese unit, a Japanese expeditionary force over here. It's going to act in the French sector, um, and it has its own replacement pool. It starts with two, and that's all it gets, but the game doesn't have, unless I lost it or it's somewhere, um, doesn't actually have a marker for it. So I used a out-of-supply marker up there to denote the Japanese replacements. It'll only have two, one, or zero, but we you still ideally have a way to mark that, so that that's what we got. Um, the other interesting thing is that the Allies get uh, four armor, you know, tank replacement points every, I think it's every turn or something like that, and it's at large. So you can spend those four to rebuild tanks. Um, you can use regular replacements to replace tanks, but you always have four across the board, across nationalities, to repair your tanks with. There's not a marker for that either. Uh, you can't save them, so you get four, and you have to spend all four, but it would have been nice to have a marker just to say, okay, here's my four, there's one, two, three, as you make the changes on the map. Um, but you don't have a, a thing for that either, so you kind of have to, you know, maybe you, you can use a die for a minute while you do those updates. Um, what's interesting, like, I, I think there were a bunch of extra blind counters that came with the game, so they could have easily included markers for that. It just seems like they they didn't. Uh, you know, unless I'm missing something or I lost I lost one uh, or something, I don't think I did. So it just, it would have been nice to have a couple of markers used, some of those blank chits for, for these. An, an oversight, perhaps, but not a big one, I guess. A very, very minimal uh, concern there. So, uh, I will have to do setup, so I will do that, but I just want to make sure you guys could see the changes on the map um, and that the overall situation would be a little bit different. Uh, the Germans don't necessarily have, they don't, what, what will happen is I will need to roll two dice. That will govern how many Stoss Truppen units the Germans get. So by default, they're going to start with their, their infantry with the dots on them. We'll roll two dice. We'll get somewhere between two and 12 with a standard bell curve number of units that will be swapped out for their Stoss Truppen equivalent. Um, and then th there's some restrictions on those units where uh, they can't take replacements, so they will be whittled away eventually, and then once dead, they'll be replaced by their dot version again. So, um, like I said, a, a, a bit of nuance and these different additional rules I'll have to watch out for. It's not too, too big or crazy, but um, we'll look at it. But, but the setup's going to be along the main trench lines, uh, as in other scenarios. <clears throat> the big thing will be, I think, a big game... The big game changer will be the uh, change in armor. So the British have heavy tanks and fast tanks. Their sort of doctrine is going to be awfully close to armor doctrine we would see in later decades, where the heavy tanks are going to try to bust through uh, the line, and then the fast tanks can support um, infiltration and, and even support infiltration a hex further than normal. So you actually could see, if, if the attacks go well enough, true encirclements occur on the line. Um, but they will be opposed by some of these anti-tank markers you can see here. And they're not really strong units themselves. They can stack well with other units, but what they do is they nullify tank bonuses. So there's now a little bit, you know, of something resembling maybe more leaning towards that, you know, World War II uh, operational thing where the tanks can be big movers now, or more, you know, more significant than they were before uh, in World War One, as if we're not talking this hypothetical late World War One. But the Germans also have anti-tank to to oppose that, and in, in, in enough numbers that they are counters in the game. Um, you also have a uh, mountain unit that has some abilities and infiltration capability. And we also have an Austro-Hungarian unit that is just kind of there to have fun. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll get things set up. It'll be kind of interesting to see how this differs from the standard 1918. Um, I'm glad they included this, just a few, you know, a handful of extra counters, and you've got sort of a different, very different feeling uh, game here, potentially. Um, I mean, not, not totally so, but enough interesting bits that it's a pretty cool variant. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll get it up. I'll, I'll get set up and then we'll get started. This, this scenario starts with the allied turn of turn zero. Um, and so we'll, we'll look to get started with that. 
Okay, here we are with the setup. Um, now, I ended up rolling, uh, when I rolled 2d6 for the Stoffs Troop and for the Germans, I rolled a 6 and a 2, so that combined to be an 8. So there are 8 Stoffs Troop and uh, German units out on the board. The uh, Germans do have their tanks, they put it up there. There were enough units that I could actually kind of cover the line, which is kind of interesting. Um, and I tried to position where... Yeah, I, the anti-tanks I sort of spread out just so that there wasn't like some obvious place to focus uh, tank units on the Allied side. Their own tank unit is kind of up over here, hopefully, you know, looking to help kind of protect this flat land where it can counterattack. We can use the tanks to counterattack. Um, and, and the Germans actually get uh, infiltration capability with that tank, like the Allied tanks previously, or in the standard game. Uh, the uh, Americans can no longer stack with their buddies, so what's kind of interesting is they don't get... I, for a second, I, earlier I thought it was they got this whole side, but it turns out the French actually have... Like, they get over here and over here, but the, the Americans get this slice over here. The units are stacked pretty high because the stacking rules are changed so that the U.S. can have four units in a hex, um, because they're all divisions, obviously. Uh, and then we've got the American tank down here, and uh, everything's lined up. The Japanese expeditionary force is over here, stacked with, um, at least I'm pretty sure. Oh, dang it, I've got I've to change this. It can't stack with any other units in the game. So what I'm going to do is have them set up like that. My bad. But the Japanese expeditionary force is actually infiltration capable, so it'll be interesting to see, like, how do I make use of that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe I won't. Um, but the, uh, the British tank units are set up uh, over here, and what they're going to do is they're going to surge into these areas. So here's the, here's the Allied strategy. They're going to try to move here, break through these hexes, surround Cambrai, which is right here, uh, and basically bust the line, get through some of the trenches, um, infiltrate, move even further around uh, the area, and, and basically have for sure busted the line at some point and enabled the uh, Germans, or rather the British, to take Cambrai via isolation, um, and then that will be our springboard to head sort of this direction, in a northeast direction, sort of. Um, that's the, kind of the main English play, right? And they're going to keep their tanks kind of near each other uh, so that they can support one another in, in creating these breakouts, but that will enable us, hopefully, to either make mad dashes for the map edge and cut these guys out of supply or just roll up the flank or roll down the flank this way which will be supported by a variety of French, attack, French attacks here potentially just to beat up on the Germans while we can but the uh, French armor is focused around here and we're going to try to make a breakthrough similar to what we did in the previous session um, trying to make a breakthrough into this flat terrain and then again, maybe, you know, be able to peel left and peel right uh, so that, you know, you start to get a pincer around these Germans down here. Uh, and then we can start to push uh, that way towards Sedan and basically cause the Germans to have to maybe retreat from their trench lines. And then similarly, um, down here, the Americans are going to try to force their way right through this spot with the goal to get uh, St. Mihail uh, surrounded and taken, potentially, and then enable offensive operations towards Mets. So because of the three different nationalities here and different sets of mechanized forces, we kind of have, you know, I've kind of drawn up some basic, you know, focus points. Now, because the Germans set up first, we could make these decisions. We could react in our setup as the Allies to kind of look for the weakest points and hope for the best. Uh, the German anti-tank units we'll have to watch out for. Uh, the Stoss Truppen are there. They could potentially do infiltration uh, attacks against the Allies, so there's still some counterpunch capability of the Germans. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see kind of how this plays out. But those, those are the strategic uh, 
the strategic things we're looking at, basically, that I'm, I'm thinking are the right right way to go. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll, we'll pay special close attention to our combat results table. Uh, the replacement chart is a different replacement chart than the standard game. We also have the Royal Air Force, which is an addition to the existing British Air Unit that can do strategic and tactical bombing, or we can remove steps or reduce the replacement rate for the Germans. Uh, but overall, the Allies definitely have air superiority, so there's really not much the Germans can do about that. They're just going to get negated most of the time, and then the Allies will be able to counterpunch with more air than the Germans can handle. So, yeah, I, the offensive strategic offensive leaning is for the Allies. The Germans can kind of counterattack. They're really just aiming to hold on as long as possible. I've kind of figured out, you know, where we're going to get our our morale points to drive them down to zero, and it is going to be over here and then largely up here. I mean, those are the most critical areas. Uh, we could try to go for Strasbourg, I think, you know, way, way over here, but um, the mountains are really a problem there, and unless I've totally outflanked the German position, it won't be an easy thing to get over there, but we'll worry about that, you know, as the situation develops. Obviously, we'll redirect forces as we can, um, and if we can get to the point where we're wearing the Germans out, then we'll we'll look to do that. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna get we're gonna get started here. Um, so I'll put another break here. I just want to talk about the setup, but then we're gonna get started with uh, the. I guess it's turn zero, first half of May, uh, Allied turn. So. Uh, we're, we don't need to do supply, there's no replacement or reinforcements to place, so we're just going to have strategic movement, which we're not going to do. So really, it's just going to be regular movement, uh, which is going to be these tank units coming into the pertinent hexes they need to be in. Um, and then we'll look at combats. Okay, movement is complete, and we'll go ahead and just get into the combats. Uh, we'll start down here with the Americans, where we're going to have... Uh, an attack on this 564 unit, which is defended on the trench. The uh, tanks are going to nullify that advantage, and so we're going to have two, four, six, nine, fifteen, twenty-one, twenty-four to six. That is four to one odds, straight up. We're going on straight up. Uh, and we only got a two result. Um, so he's going to flip. We're going to lose the tank. And take two more step losses. So we'll just... like so. So not great out of the gate, <laughs> uh, we'll say, certainly. Um, the other attack I was thinking about was here, but now that that attack didn't go well, I'm not sure eh, if it's worth it. Um, I think we would have, what, four... Six, nine, fourteen, nineteen, nineteen to four, so it'd be four to one odds, but minus like three. I don't think that's worth it. So dang, that sucks. Um, Allied offensive there did not go the way we wanted it to. Um, let's try over here. Um, where we're focused on this unit. Uh, oh, I probably shouldn't have put these tanks together now that I'm thinking. Well, I don't know. So we're going to nullify the trench hex and attack it with 8, 12, 18, 
think that's 36 to 6, so it's going to be bloody, um, 6 to 1, but we have a good odds chance of destroying that unit, and I think I want to do that for sure. Um, okay, so that is a 3 and 3 result, so we do lose both, we're going to lose both tanks, because they have to be lost first, but this unit is destroyed. Um, we'll do advance after combat. Both of these stacks have infiltration movement capability, uh, and so we'll come back to them uh, after the next bit. Um, we could try maybe over here, and this would be 4, 8, 16, 22 to 6, which is 4 to 1 odds, minus 2. Um, yeah, we can try it. Okay, so no, that didn't work out well. It takes a step loss, and then we need to take four step losses, um, which are not good. That's That was bad. We need such high combat odds value for a chance to eliminate the German unit entirely, which is kind of a valuable thing here. Um, okay, next we have some of the tank combat. So the first one we have is here. Um, let me make sure. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so the first attack will go here. Um, so we're going to have our tanks nullify the advantage. We're going to have 7, 14, 16, 23, 30. So 5 to 1 odds straight up. Alright, 5 to 1 odds straight up. That's a, okay, so a 2 3 result. So this guy is eliminated. You can't retreat to avoid it. Um, and then, let's see, how did I figure I wanted to do this? Um, take two step losses. They have to be tanks. Do one step, one step. The tanks are still there. <clears throat> they don't go away. And then... We'll have, let's see, advance, advance, advance. Well, I guess I could even have these guys advance. And then <clears throat> they will have the ability to do an infiltration move there. Um, then we'll have the second attack here, which likewise will have the trench nullified. We'll have 3, 8, 12, 18, 21, 28, 30. Also, 5 to 1 odds, straight up. Okay, and that is, uh, yeah, that's also, now that's a little worse, that's not a 2-3, but that's a 3-3, three, three, so this unit is destroyed, we're going to take 1-2, lose the tank, I think we have to take the rest of our losses off the light fast tank as well, unfortunately. Um, since you have to tank, take tank losses first, but then uh, these guys advance after combat, and I guess technically um, can infil infiltrate move because of the heavy tank still. Um, and I think that's all the combats that I wanted to do, and then we'll have infiltration movement, and where these guys will go, well, let's see, how do I want to do this, um, you 
can actually, yeah, see, this is interesting. We can do, <sighs> hmm, we can, we can infiltrate move even further than we might think we would. Um, But I do want to guarantee the loss of these units, so maybe all we do is infiltrate move and then well, okay. He would inf these guys would infiltrate move to here. This guy could infiltrate move to here. An extra hex. And then be putting this guy in a really tough position. And I think we want to do that. And then these guys in the north, I think, would infiltrate move like so. Yeah. I think that works. So... Yeah, now we'll go back down the line and do our additional combats, but I'm going to pause for a second just to make sure I want to make these moves. I forgot about our other uh, infiltration move. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk through what that's going to look like. We say this whole stack will infiltrate move like that. And then this stack will infiltrate move like that. So we're probably in really good shape there. Um, and we could basically pick, you know, one or the other hex to wallop on here in this upcoming secondary combat. Uh, but let's go back up north where we want to focus. So, um, we could try to attack here. That might be worthwhile. Uh, we would negate the hex. We'd get a plus one, and it would be seven, eleven, thirteen, a six. Two to one odds with a plus one. I like, I like those odds, um, I think. <laughs> Two to one odds, plus one, yeah. And I think what we'll do is, um, we will make this a plus two attack and exhaust some of the air. So two to one, plus three. We got a seven, so yeah, he's eliminated. We take uh, a step loss off this tank and we lose this guy. So the tanks are out. But then um, we advance after combat and we've definitely broken through the line. No doubt about that. Um, is there any point to attacking up here? Um, they would have nowhere to go, but they're not. I don't think they're going to be able to, to break back through unless we wanted to guarantee we got it. The only thing is they've got 10 defense factors, 8, 11, 21, 29 to 10, we could almost get 3 to 1 odds, but just not enough. So I think maybe we let those guys there um, and let them die on the vine, because I think that's probably what's going to happen. Um, coming back down to the French sector, if we had tried to attack here, now we don't have tanks, so he would have a minus three. We would have eight, 16, 19 of four. Um, so that would be four to one odds, minus a whole bunch. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. Um, we could have tried here, and this would be five. We would have eight. 16, 20, 20, so still 4 to 1 odds that it would only be minus 2. So I think we'd try here. Four to one odds minus two, or I'm 
I'm sorry. Yeah, 4 to 1 odds minus 2 instead of minus 30. Okay. Um, they're going to retreat. And we need to take three step losses, so that would be 1... And maybe we say three. But we're creating a pretty tough situation there. Um, and then down here, we can try another attack, though it's going to be a lot weaker. So it would be five, eight. 16 to 5, 3 to 1, whoops, 3 to 1 minus 2. That'd be as much as we could get, 3 to 1 minus 2. Um, I think we can try it. Uh, cause a step loss, so he'll retreat. Um, we take three step, step losses, so 1, 2, Three, but we'll take the hex. It kind of puts them in a tougher position there, but um, I mean, we'll take it. Um, and then do we try to take St. Michael? I think we wait until next turn to try to take it because it's getting pretty beat back. I mean, it, the real thing is, like, do we try to make something happen here? Um, four minus, and minus three to the die roll. That'd be ten. Fourteen. Nineteen. Four to one. 4 to 1 minus 3. Um, uh, 4 to 1 minus 3. I don't think that's good enough odds. I think we wait, but it's going to be a tough thing. Um, <clears throat> it's like wait for what, right? Um, and what you're really trying to do is... What we need is the tanks back, I guess. But yeah, there you go. Um, so, <clears throat> where, where have we gotten in this turn zero? Well, the Allies have broken through in multiple places, not quite down here. The Americans didn't do enough, but their, their situation is tougher. There's a lot better ter de defensive terrain down there. Um, but, yeah, we, we've punched through. We eliminated uh, four German units, but the Allies lost their tanks. Uh, they'll get those guys back without too much trouble. Um, but they got to keep this drive going, right? They got to bring, bring this all, uh, bring these guys down uh, quickly as possible. Um, so we'll see what the Germans can do in response. But we'll go to turn one here uh, next. I'll do all the typical German stuff um, off camera. When we come back, they'll be set up after their move for any combats they want to do. Okay, so here we are with the. Uh, the Germans' moves complete. They're definitely in a pickle. Um, so uh, they've, sh well, I should say, they've shaved off many uh, of their replacements. So they're down to eight at the moment, um, trying to rebuild units, get things back in shape. Because of one of the eliminated Stoss Troopen markers came off the board, um, the in the dead pile, the unit is replaced with its normal infantry counter, and that was brought onto the board. So some of the Stoss Troopen already kind of beat up. Uh, we've got those guys out of supply, surrounded by British. I don't think there's any real good way for them to get out. Um, but I will say that <laughs> this is a pretty tough situation for the Germans already. The fact that we had a very well executed armor offensive, uh, armor boosted offensive that enabled um, a pretty, what is that, like a one, two, three, four hex wide break in the line. And the Germans can't even, I mean, it, they can't even cover it, really, without, like, totally pulling back already. So what I did was uh, we pulled a unit down here to get a Zoc barrier, 
and then we replenished and strategically moved units um, like so, using all of our strategic movement to get some guys into the city morale points right here and here to kind of contain it, uh, but they can't move out of the cities yet. So uh, that uh, this whole situation alone is such a dramatic impact on the game that uh, it, the Germans are already hurting from that, I think, alone. Um, they are going to try to counterattack, I think, though, and try to attack here um, to try to free these guys and put these units um, out of supply because there is a zone of control here and here. Um, so that might be their only option, as, and they're going to use their tank, I think, to do it um, just to kind of help get some some help in enforcing the situation, but they're going to have to roll reasonably well um, to do it, I think. I'm going to have to look at the numbers. But just looking elsewhere down the line, I mean, you can see we're sort of trying to shuffle things around. I move the anti-tank unit over here thinking, well, we want to keep the Allies from punching through the trench line here. That's probably a good place to go next. But over here, the anti-tank's not going to help us as much. Um, so we're just trying to throw bodies in front to slow down the beat-up French. We could try to counterattack somewhere over here. I have to think through that. Um, and then, you know, we were able to kind of halt the Americans. You know, they, they're not getting too far. Um, they took a hex, but, but paid for it. And we could see a four-hex attack on the right here, maybe. I've got to see. The real advantage that the uh, Americans have and this gets back to the whole, you know, what is a CRT best used for? Um, you know, if you're attacking, say, a French unit by itself, or two stacked, I mean, you can kind of figure out what's the right way to attack. But the Americans in that stack have, you know, each division is two steps. There's really eight steps right here, right? It's not like, oh, yeah, they can stack four units, but the Americans have this tremendous advantage because each division each of those four units has two steps, as opposed to, at most, a, a different allied nationality could have a maximum of, like, six steps or seven if you count the tank. Um, and so, you know, in theory, I guess the Americans could have up to nine steps. So even if the Germans attacked here and did very well, and let's say they did four step losses, the, the Americans won't have to give up that hex, and they probably the Germans have probably taken a number of step losses that they can't really afford to take. So there's some resiliency in the Americans that should not be uh, ignored or forgotten because that, that's such a powerful thing that they have. Um, so, yeah, I just want to kind of show the board position after the German move. I need to think through the attacks, so I'm going to do that before I come back. This might this game might actually be a little bit slower and harder to record because there's so many additional factors to, to take into account because of the armor capability and the extra units and everything else. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, I did decide, I had to retroactively do it, the uh, RAF went to do strategic bombing and the German air went to nullify it, so uh, the Allies still have a, a uh, I think I did use, yeah, no, that was on the other turn, so um, the Allies still have uh, basically a three air three to zero air advantage that they can use in any combats coming up. So it could be important here to keep this, you know, breakthrough uh, maintained and to see the Germans fall apart here. So, yeah, I'm going to think through these attacks and then we'll come back and see what the roles are and if there's any real infiltration movement that can happen. We might have to use infiltration movement to, like, get some of these Stoss units out of the pocket that's forming. Um, that's kind of a you know, that's an advantage we can use, but it, it's going to be hard. Um, so yeah, let me let me think this through. Okay, I was looking here. Um, it's not worth it to try. It, it's just going to be too bloody for the Germans. So there's no almost no point in trying to to deal with the Americans. They just have too much. They can take losses better. Um, the French, though, uh, might be a different story, and we could certainly see um, a case to attack here uh, because it's going to be seven of four. And that's one to one plus one, um, but that one step loss would get rid of the French unit. 
and we'd have better board position there. Um, so, eh, I don't know. It's kind of a tough call. Um, I'm going to roll a die to see if I attack. I'm going to attack. Okay. So, 7 to 4. I'll, I'll, yeah, it's still just 1 to 1, unfortunately. And I get a plus 1. Uh, so they have a 2 and 2, so this unit is eliminated, so is this German unit, and we'll go ahead and advance, well, actually, this Stoss Troopin takes a step loss and then advances, um, <clears throat> and we'll just leave it like so. So that maybe wasn't worth it, but, um, sorry. Gotta get this correct. Maybe not worth it, but we want to ensure that we're hurting the British, or I'm sorry, the French, as much as we can where it makes sense to. Um, then up here, uh, is there anything that is worthwhile to try? Well, we could attack here. It seems just in the flat, we could attack with 9, 10, 2 to 1 odds plus 1 is actually not so bad. So we're going to try here. Oof. <laughs> that was an interesting die roll. Five. Because uh, plus one. So we get um, two to one odds of five. So two and two. So uh, let's see. I have to see what way these guys can retreat. Um, okay, I th think they can retreat this way. So take a step loss and retreat. Um, have to take a step loss. Have to take a step loss. And then we could advance. Um, but unfortunately, well, I guess we could advance like this. We'd still have the ability to defend in German trenches here, so that's actually a good move. Um, and then we have the attack up here, which would be 9, 14, 18, 18 plus 2, yeah, well, 18 to 6 plus 2, so 3 to 1 plus 2. One for the concentric attack, plus one because of the uh, tank, actually. Um, and, well, I guess we could do it the Stoss Troop in any way, but we're, we'll, we'll do the tank. Um, so, yeah, three to one plus two this is actually a pretty good roll. Um, not if I roll a one, though. <laughs> um, okay, three to one plus two, so it's take one step loss. And then the Germans have to take two step losses. So we have to lose one off the German unit. And then uh, we'll lose one off this trench unit. Um, and that did not go as well as we would have liked, obviously. Um, okay, so now we can do infiltration move. Let me make sure, I think they're all still, the Stosh Troopin can still do, um, do this. So we're going to move here. This will open up the supply line anyway. Um, I don't think there's any other moves we want to make. We, I guess we could do this. That and then 
for second combat phase, I guess we could look at attacking here again, but we would have 5, 11, Fifteen, so still three to one odds, plus two. <clears throat> okay, so that yeah, they are going to eliminate that unit then um, at this point. So um, yeah, three to one, plus plus two, still because of the concentric attack and stock trooping. Um, I didn't roll a whole lot better, but it is better. So I rolled a two plus two is four, three to one. Four is two hits, so he's eliminated no matter what. Um, but the Germans have to take three step losses, so do one, two, three. Oh, maybe I'll do here instead. Try to keep this guy here full up. Um, and we probably, we will advance after combat, advance after combat, and then, um, I don't think we're going to do any other, well, we could do more combats down here, and we could go 6, 11 to 4. Four isn't great. Um, maybe that's all we do. And so when we get to the end of the uh, German phase, we take these guys off. They are actually in supply. But then, you know, when the Allies start their turn, these guys will be out of supply, which is pretty not great them. Um, so we'll have to see how the allies can react to that. Let's, uh, let's get all the preliminary ally stuff out of the way. But that sucks. I mean, we had a really good move, but the Germans were able to throw enough bodies in to cut off the, uh, the advance, which is, that's, that's tough, man. That's tough for the allies. They're going to have to figure something out there. Um, but we'll check back. Well, as I was going through the, uh, the allied setup for the next turn, I realized um, that the French don't get any replacements. <laughs> they they get zero. Now, this reflects their exhaustion, which, yeah, if the war went in in 1919, the French were, I mean, very oftentimes on the point of mutiny, um, so or did mutiny even a little bit. So, I mean, that makes sense. But, <clears throat> boy, we've been a little spendy with our uh, French manpower in, in that instance. So it's really going to be on the British and the Americans to make headway here. Uh, which is why all of the mechanized at-large replacements went to the British forces. Um, they even dipped into their regular replacements um, for getting their guys uh, up to snuff for uh, more attacks here. Uh, the French have limited capability to do much, so they're going to maybe try to do some attacks. This is mostly just to put uh, the Germans in a, in a bad spot, basically, um, to where we can you know, eliminate a lot of German units and well, one fell swoop, maybe at some point as we, like, maybe start going this way. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to need the Americans to really uh, have at here and try to make something happen uh, to break the German line down in the south. That's almost required at this point. So, uh, movement is complete. We couldn't get all of our British tanks back into the fray because the action sort of down here. So they were leaving these reinforcement uh, hexes, the supply hexes. So, uh, we are going to need to try to get these guys back in supply over here. So we're going to have a great big attack. It's going to be four points from here after having um, had 14, 17 to 5. We're going to spend out uh, our air, so the concentric attack um, and the three air is plus four, minus two to the German trench. So it's a plus two. Three to one, plus two. And we are going to get, we're going to get it. Um, but it's, eh, it's a little costly. So this guy's eliminated. Uh, so we have another regular unit 
replacing it in the Deadpool. Um, but we do take two step bosses, which I'm not excited about. Um, but we can make headway like that, I guess. Um, yeah, so these guys will be back in supply at the end of the turn. Then we have an attack, I think, here. We want to try, so that's 12. 15 of 4 is uh, 3 to 1 odds. With the tank bonus. And then minus for the trench. 3 to 1 odds minus 1, which is not great, but we would like to try to force the situation here a little bit. Or no, the, the trench doesn't matter, and the... Uh, yeah, I guess... Hmm, so this... Yeah, this would have been maybe even better. I forgot the tanks nullify, and we did... So that would have been a plus three. So... One, two, three... Okay, so they would have only lost one step. Okay, that works. Okay. I, I forgot the way the tanks nullify the uh, nullify the trench knot gets added into the bonus. In which case, this guy is just a three to one, straight up. And let's see, three to one. No, oh, that's not going to be enough. So we take a step loss, and we take two step losses, and. We'll lose the fast tanks. Um, okay, and then we have, let's see, any other attacks along the line that we want to try? Well, we could try over here and have... <clears throat> 9, 13... Twenty-five, so f five to one. That's a little bloody. Um, why don't we ratchet that down to four to one? And we got a three, so he is eliminated. And we take three step losses, so one two for the cavalry, and then th we'll do three. We'll advance after combat, like so. So that's that's doing pretty good. We're going to probably make some great gains there in time. And then down here, I think what we're going to try is attacking this guy. Um, we can get up to four. That's ten right there. Um, Seven, nine, so nineteen, and then twenty-four, twenty-seven to four is a lot. Is a lot. Um, now, where do where do we want to end up on the? Seven to one with a plot minus two. That's super bloody, but I think we can do it. <laughs> Seven to one minus two. Or is it? Wait, ah, uh, no. Nineteen. Twenty-seven. It's actually not four to one, or not seven to one. It's six to one. Huh. Okay, six to one. And a minus three. Oh, that's not good. Um, yeah, well, okay. So, takes a step loss. He does retreat. And we take four step losses. So, do one, two. Well, one, two, 
three, four. And we'll advance after combat. And set these Americans over there. And now we will have surrounded St. Mihiel, and we've got these guys in rough, rough situations. Um, okay, and now I need to do infiltration movement. There's not really any that I would want to make other than... Uh, I will infiltrate move one of the heavy tanks to a better position so it's not as exposed. And the fast tanks can get to the unit, maybe, is how I want this to go. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be the way we want it to work. And then, or, well, I don't know. Um, I think we leave them there, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'll have to think a minute on second attacks for the, uh, the allies. Okay, so I think for second attacks, we, we might go here, and I think it's going to be, and we could get 15 to 3, um, and it would be a straight up, because he's not in uh, trench hacks, uh, would be um, 5 to 1, and that's awfully bloody. Um, can we make it 4 to 1? We could make it 4 to 1. Um, and that is a little bit better, so we'll roll 4 to 1. Uh, and let's see, that is, okay, so he is eliminated. Take two step losses. One. Now let's see. One, two, I guess. And advance after combat. And we're starting to reach around the, the German flank here. And the thing is, I think the Germans still get the defense bonus of the trench, even if they're being attacked from whichever side. But I think what's important here is, like, we are... We're, we're one, removing units from the board, and we're starting to um, put them in a position where, you know, we're going to go, like, what, one, two, three, and we can start entertaining the idea that we're going to cause... Um, a dramatic breakthrough problem for them to have to solve, I think, as we're, we're looking at that. Um, so there's that. Um, I was trying to think, is there anything that the Germans want to, or the Americans want to try? Um, eight, 14, 20 to 6. That'd be 3 to 1, minus 2. Uh, hmm. Yeah, sure, we can try it. Okay, so that's not great. Um, take a step loss. Take step loss. Step loss. Well, I'll do two step losses over here. You guys can't even see that, I'm sorry. We we tried to attack here and it didn't really go our way. But that's okay. Sort of taking our step losses in such a way that we can handle the losses a little bit better, but that was alright. Um <clears throat> and then up here is there anything we want to try? Well, we, we could try to slam in to here again. Um, I'm not sure it's going to be worthwhile to try. And we could have 10. It would be 3 to 1 minus 2. Um, and we would have to roll a 6 to eliminate the unit, which I don't feel very comfortable with. Um, alternatively... I guess if we did, we would be cutting them back out of supply, which would be helpful. 
Um, oh, and I forgot that these guys could... Oh, I, sh I screwed this up a little bit. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Say one, two, three, four, five, six. Where did these guys come from? Shoot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I might have screwed. Yeah. Okay. They can't get involved in any combats. So it's really a question of do we try ten, three to one, three to one straight up. Hmm. I think we try it. Um, okay, three to one straight up. He is eliminated. The tank is eliminated. And we take some step losses. I don't know that we want to try to advance after combat. I guess we could advance after combat like this. And then it's going to be that much <clears throat> harder. Well, that would put them out of supply, but I guess they're in supply until <clears throat> the next go around. Um, I think we I think we maintain the line here and we don't advance after combat. We're going to knock these guys out of supply anyway. It's just <clears throat> it's going to be easy for them to get back in supply, but that's fine. So we end our thing there and uh, these guys are back in supply, and these guys are in trouble over all through here. Um, heavily in trouble, as it happens. Um, so yeah, that's it for turn, technically turn one. We'll go into turn two. I think we'll go ahead and have the RAF try to strat bomb. The Germans are going to try to stop them, and then uh, we'll start back with the German action to see what they can do. Okay, sort of skip through what the Germans are up to. I mean, they they tried an attack here that didn't work. They wanted to cut these guys off. I rode poorly. So we're just going to end their turn here on turn two. And they got these guys back in supply. Um, so basically there's like, I don't know, it's like a cauldron battle over here. Um, just trying to outmaneuver and fight their way through. But they're not getting to where they ideally really want to be. And I think there's a potential... Um, for uh, the Allies to kind of, you know, maybe get some more of these guys cut off. Um, I mean, the Germans still get a decent number of replacements every turn, so it's like, you know, they really got to be smashing their way through to make the progress that they need. But um, so far, they're still performing well on defense. They're bringing in reinforcements here that are coming off the board. Um, and actually, come to think of it, no, yeah, they're okay there. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of tough. So we're going to kick it back over to the Allies here on turn two. This might be the last bit of the turn I do before we close this video up. Um, so we'll deal with the reinforcements. The British get one. The USA gets two. And we'll uh, we'll see what happens. We'll do their movement and all that good stuff here. Okay, so we're going to have the first combat round um, up here. And you can just see we sort of moved everything together. We've got tank support in a variety of places. Um, what I'd really like to do, I need to take this hex. This was well placed by me, this anti-tank in lens. Um, Come to think of it, oh yeah, I couldn't write it right. Okay, so the anti-tank stops the bonus here, so it's going to be a minus three, but they're attacking with three, five, twelve, fifteen, eighteen to six, so that's three to one, three to one, minus three, I think, is what that ends up being. Um, 
Uh, is this the right attack? Maybe, <clears throat> maybe what we do instead, maybe we should move these guys down here and attack here and have that be, that's eight. We have 10. 22, 23 to 8. Hmm. And that'll be 2 to 1 plus 1. 2 to 1 plus 1. <clears throat> Is that worth it? Um, hmm. So we're getting into a really hard hard thing where it's like, okay, you know, I, I could basically have moved these units, you know, from from here, wherever I was, like right here, to somewhere along the line where we can take advantage of it. And I'm wondering maybe I don't try to break out down here instead. Maybe that's the better move up there. Um, <clears throat> uh, man, this is such a hard, hard decision to make. Um, And the Germans are just set up enough that, like, I really would like to attack them to put more guys out of supply and just reduce their effectiveness. But we need to be dealing a lot of damage ultimately. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna take myself off camera and figure this out. Okay, I think what we are gonna do is we're gonna attack here and we're gonna spend out our air. And what's gonna come out to be is three to one uh, plus three. So we got a six, so these guys are eliminated. Another Stosh Trooper out. Another unit out. Take two step losses, so do one. Yeah. Two. after combat and then we'll do a combat I think right here and it'll be 11 18 21 to 5 that's 4 to 1 odds 4 to 1 odds he's got nowhere to go uh, for one odds minus, it's just a town, it's not a city, so minus one. Okay, he is for sure eliminated. And we'll take two step losses, which all have to be from the tank, I think, which sucks. But we'll take this and knock German morale down by one. We've taken, I should point out, uh, the German units here that were out of supply got removed, and we took that with the uh, American move. So that's one morale down, now two morale down for taking Cambrai. Um, then... we had up here two to one odds
and that's unfortunately just a step loss for two. And I have to take this. Ouch. Dang, man. All right, now we have uh, infiltration movement up here. And I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to do this by sector. So we're just going to do all the all the fun stuff there. Um, well, maybe I have another attack I'd like to do. 7, 10, 13, 3 to 1, minus 2, 3 to 1, minus 2. Um, sure. All right, 1, step loss. So, beaten up on the Austrians, um, they can't take replacements, so we're going to chip him away to nothing. So that's, yeah, maybe maybe I'll just do the rest of the normal combats, it doesn't matter. Um, over here, I think we are going to try 8, 16 to 4, 4 to 1 odds, minus 2. Uh, that's not good. Um, take one step loss. We take four step losses. And so that was not well advised. Not a good move, I guess, but who would have thought I rolled a one? Uh, let's see, where else? We could go down here. Um, we don't have our tanks. So it would be 16, 20, 3 to 1, minus 2. Um, I guess we could try it. So we ended up getting a three, so one. I guess we'll retreat and take two step losses. But we'll advance after combat. End up something like this. So, I mean, the Germans can retreat, but they're eventually going to run out of places to go. And then down here, have to figure out where we want to go um, with the American attack. And really, it's going to be like, here's the tanks, so somewhere over here, elsewhere down the line. I might need to think through this. Okay, so I do think uh, we are going to have an attack here with the Americans. It's interesting that, you know, if you have a fully stacked American stack of just the two two fives, you have eight combat factors. I think we have eight here as well. Yeah, eight. So 16. And then uh, 22, 24, 30. So we're going to end up having 5 to 1 odds straight up because the tanks are going to nullify the uh, trench advantage and then everything else is straightforward. So 5 to 1 odds there. You should expect to see something good happen. Alright, so that's a five. So this unit is destroyed. Let's see, if I don't want five, take two step losses, so we lose the tank for one. We'll go ahead and just lose two steps here. And then what we'll do is um, Let's see, we'll do advance, advance, advance. Well, I guess I should do it this way. Advance, advance, right? And then these guys advance. And really, they're the ones who can do these two, three, three units. The ones that are going to get to... Uh, do their infiltration movement and they'll infiltrate like so because we're going to just do infiltration movement right now um, they're really the only ones who can even do infiltration movement and if we start the second combat phase just right away uh, we're awfully close to Metz um, 
any of the German units can probably get there next turn. Um, so where do we want to focus our efforts? Well, we can certainly cause some problems somewhere, but they have 10 combat strength. So even if we did, what, 6, 8, 11, 15... Yeah, that wouldn't necessarily be enough. Um, we could try to attack the units here before 9, 12. Eighteen. Eighteen to six with a minus three. So three to one minus three. Eh, I don't know. Probably not good enough. I'm not sure we want to waste the... the well... <laughs> eh, it's tough. It's tough. Um, maybe there's another place we could attack to just increase the pressure. We could attack down here. The uh, U.S. Marine Corps um, do give a plus one. Um, and they are infiltration capable themselves. Camera's goofed up there. Sorry about that. It's six. Twelve. Uh, Sixteen. And then 22, 22 to 6, uh, that's 3 to 1 odds, minus 2, but then plus 1 for the Marines, so 3 to 1, minus 1, that's a lot better, I think. Um, so we'll do that and see what we get. Now, oh, that's, a, that's a step loss. It's a step loss, step loss, and a step loss. So basically a one result, not not great. Whoops, I flipped the wrong guy for the Germans. My bad. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think we're fine here. Um, we look around again. Do we want to try anything over here? B8. 16, 17. B4 to 1, minus 3, or minus 2. Yeah, I don't think... Well, yeah, I'm not sure we want to yet. I don't know. I think we could do it. 4 to 1 minus 2 plus 1 for concentric attack minus 1. That's as good as it's going to get. Um, 4 to 1, so we've got 4 result, 2 and 2. Um, he can take a step loss and retreat. Take step losses off the cavalry and advance after combat. Uh, okay, um, let's see, where else, what else do we want to do? Um, we could try another attack over here, though probably ill-advised. We would have 4 to 1, minus 2. Um, 4 to 1, minus 2. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we want to try that. Um, just not good enough, honestly. So then it's a matter of, do we want to do anything else up here? Uh, we could certainly try to make something happen somewhere. Um, seven to five, be one to one odds. I don't think we want to do that. Seventeen to six. Two to one, straight up. Uh, 
don't think we want to do that either, really. Um, it's just a shame why we can't get anything better. 5, 7, 10. Do 3 to 1, minus 2. That's pretty gnarly as well. It's just really hard to find where, where can we make attacks that are going to work uh, and work well for what we're trying to achieve. Um, and attacking here isn't really great either, unfortunately. Um, we could do just the 2 to 1 and just see what happens, uh, but if I roll a 1, that would be very bad. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think we've got a hold here, unfortunately. I don't think there's any other attacks. I, what I need to do is sort of re, reshape and reform the, the, the situation a little bit. Um, but the Germans are certainly getting taxed, uh, and they can only they can only hold on a little bit longer. Um, and we could try some other sort of like ballsy attacks in a couple of these places. Seven, be one to one minus two, not not good enough. I could try to make an attack happen over here, but tanks can't go across the major river. Um, I could try to bleed out these guys up here and do a 16 to 6 but that's minus 4 so 2 to 1 minus 4 that's not good <laughs> yeah it's just really hard to figure out where to go next um, I think we'll call that the turn then um, and yeah I think that's all we'll do but you know we're, we're making progress uh, the Germans are down to 16 morale, but we're we're getting awfully close to being able to get Mets, uh, potentially breaking away the the uh, situation. Um, like I said, getting close to Mets. The Americans are doing pretty well. The French have to watch out because they're out of they're out of replacement points. So whatever they do now is merely to to hurt the Germans. Um, what really needs to happen is uh, the uh, British need to keep keep attacking as much as possible, um, and they're really not in the position to do as much as they would like to do. But they're forcing uh, the Germans sort of out of their trenches, and once they do that, then they're going to have a tremendous advantage, ripping things apart. And really, I mean, if we get a good enough breakout over here, you can see. I mean, there's. Uh, Two morale, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven, thirteen. You know, that's most of what we need. There's a couple of places along the hex line that we haven't gotten yet that will kind of push us over the top. So we just need to keep hitting them. Um, the Germans are going to really just start to be out of replacement points. We still have plenty of turns. We're only going into turn three. We still got plenty of time as the allies. We just got to watch out that we don't burn out. Um, but yeah, okay, so there we go. That's turns 0 through 2 complete. Uh, we'll look at turns 3, 4, 5 maybe in uh, another video.